It is such a joy to be here with you this morning. Joining me live is Carla Wilson, one of our extraordinary certified Sophia Circle leaders. And I'm so excited to be interviewing our extraordinary Sophia Circle leaders and that this is an opportunity for you to get to know uh, just the richness, the wealth of spiritual leadership that the Sophia Code platform is offering. And I'm really, really looking forward to diving deep with Carla today. I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I know I'm about to. Um, Carla has been leading Sophia Circle journeys now for quite some time. She successfully completed three Sophia Circle journeys. Uh, she is joining us out of St. Louis. That's where she's from. But she's also currently traveling in Sedona for the eclipse season. So this is going to be a really fun conversation in consciousness and spiritual leadership, sovereignty, and the Sophia Code. And I'd love to welcome you to today's KR Daily Transmission. Carla? Hi there. Hi. So, you know, I remember... I remember seeing you at events long before the certification program was birthed. And so you've been an important pillar in our community for quite some time. What has it been like for you to witness how our, our movement has grown uh, to activate humanity, sovereign divinity? Well, it's, um, you know, mostly from my own personal experience, um, I've witnessed how I've grown. I and I think that um, that is where most of the witnessing has been. It's, um, it's just an incredible expansion. And when did you know that you were being called to Sophia Circle Leadership? Was it an interaction with an Ascended Master, your higher self? Or was it just a, a knowing? Well, in 2006, I received a download telling me that, that I am a teacher and that I needed to be teaching not just environmental work, which was what I was doing at the time, but in these spiritual realms. And I had no idea how to do it. And so when the Sophia circle leadership opportunity came up I was like well this is what spirit is putting in front of me mm. um, th there's the structure here I can learn how to do this so uh, it was perfect I love that there was a clear prayer that you're being called into facilitating sacred space for consciousness to be raised because that's what teaching is mm -hmm. And, and I love the word facilitator, by the way, because it, it creates, a, it's a level playing field. We're all peers. So I, I love using that word. Yeah. Uh, and there's no separation there. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. The more we teach, the more we realize we have to learn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when this, um, I know that you mentioned like the structure talk to me about your journey with the structure of the certification program and leading Sophia circle journeys like what happened for you there around the conversation of structure oh <laughs> well you know i had this idea that um i i had to really work with the idea that there was structure. it was funny because that's what i really needed i needed the structure because i had no idea where to start but at the same time, I was like, well, uh, where's my room for creativity and innovation? So I decided to um, pray, actually. You know, I had done the Stardate too, so I had my altars with the Ascended Masters. And I decided to um, go to Mary Magdalene because I was like, Mary Magdalene, she's an indigo. She gets me. She's know. a rebel. Yeah, <laughs> she gets She'll me. get my rebel spirit. <laughs> So I said, uh, so Mary Magdalene, what's, what's, what's your thoughts on this? And she said one sentence to me that was like, it blew my mind. She said, you don't have a lot of practice coloring inside the lines. Oh. And it, with that one sentence, I realized that, you know, 
wanting to change the change the rules isn't um, always about creativity and innovation. Sometimes it's just a plain old boundary violation. And that's what she was teaching me. And so um, I, I just totally gave that idea up. I went exactly with the structure as given. And now I absolutely love it. I love it. It's so, it creates this safe, beautiful, powerful container that um, it just brings me joy to step inside of it. Oh my God. I am so moved to share, to, to receive that story and witness you and, and to witness your joy pouring from your face. It, it's so special. Um, and where do you find the creative spaces in that with this consciousness, the rodeo of this consciousness in the, in the Sophia circle journey? Like you mentioned that word creativity. What, what is creative for you and your leadership with this? Cause it sounds like that was a concern for you. How does the structure invoke your creativity? Well, the Sophia Code is all about within that structure, okay? Within that structure, what is the core and essence of the Sophia Code teachings is divine sovereignty. So, you know, it's, it's um, every step of the way, it's, it, um, it, you know, whether you know, first studying it and now facilitating it for others, it's encouraging me to step more and more into my own divine sovereignty. And, you know, uh, at a certain point, you realize there is no separation between your will and divine will. So there's nothing that, that you don't have to paint outside the lines because you can choose to, but um, once you decide to align your will with divine will, then, then the whole idea of, of whether you're inside or out, it's, it, that's just all dissolves. It's just all you want is to be in alignment with divine will, whatever that looks like. Yeah, I'm being reminded of that um, a little, I can't, I'm paraphrasing it, um, but that moment in the chapter four of the Sophia Code where the key codes are sharing, like if you want to experience your life as like perfect brush strokes, like a master calligrapher, it's like come into alignment with that divine will come and embody your higher self and experience like the creative genius of God painting through you mm -hmm. in every choice. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm really feeling that joy pouring, pouring from your voice and, and your beautiful eyes and that expression. Um, let's talk a little bit about Mary Magdalene. I think she's one of the most misrepresented and misunderstood ascended masters there is. And I love that the Sophia Code, part of our ministry is, is to offer uh, an opportunity for people to meet Mary Magdalene in her creative genius, in her sovereign embodiment. What has it been like to lead side by side with her? What have you discovered about her as an ascended master mentor through your Sophia Circle leadership? to know her as a revolutionary. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is the most revolutionary thing we can do is to, right, is to, is to find the light within. So to know her as a re revolutionary and to also know her one as one with um, discipline. Yes. Um, and to, to have that, that spiritual paradox not be a paradox at all, Mm. But both those strands be in alignment with each other has has taught me a great deal. Really, the whole Sophia Code journey, this this um, clarity around the importance of boundary setting mm -hmm. and and honoring other people's boundaries has um, has been a, an enormous gift. Oh my gosh, that was articulated so beautifully. Thank you, Carla. Um, I would love to hear, you know, any examples that you would like to share about breakthroughs or miracles or anything that was just fascinating for you about a particular client or community moment as you, I mean, you facilitated three Sophia Circle journeys. So you've seen a lot at this point, like maybe a highlight or two from your journeys. Well, one of, um, I was just talking to one of uh, the Sophia Circle participants. She participated in my second circle. And um, 
before she started her Sophia Circle journey, her primary prayer was to find her voice. Mm. And when I talked to her the other day, she explained to me that, that that's no longer her goal. And, and I said, why? She said, well, that was pre my Sophia Circle journey. Now I feel like I've found my voice. And yeah. I said, so what was it about the Sophia Circle journey that allowed you to find your voice? And she said, all the, the, the emphasis on self-love allowed me to go deep into the journey of self-love, to, to really focus on expanding my own self-love. And when I did that, I stopped worrying about what other people would think about what I said. And when I stopped worrying about that, then I was able to find my voice. That's and like then a, the interesting thing. That's like a mic drop moment. Like, yeah. Big blessings to this Sophia Circle participant and this community. Yes. Wow. Yes. It was so lovely. And um, then, so I said, so, so what is your goal now? Your spiritual goal now that you've found your voice, you've accomplished that what goal. And she said, I, I think I really want to be an advocate for, for people who don't, uh, who don't have a voice. And she didn't even hear what she was saying. I said, I said, oh, so now that you've found your voice, you want to be an advocate for people who's, who don't have a voice. And she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about it that way. <laughs> she was thinking of people who are, you know, not respected in society or whatever, who, who aren't powerful. And, um, but the word she used was people who don't have a voice. And, and that's, that's a, what she wants to do with her voice. Isn't that a beautiful it, circle? It, oh, it's such an extraordinary reflection because that's the journey of the Stargate one curriculum into the Stargate two curriculum, uh -huh. where we journey with the Ascended Masters through the Sophia Code for the first time. We're establishing these mentor relationships, which is what's happening in a Sophia circle journey. We're coming into contact with our higher self. We're embodying our higher self. We're learning how this is a daily practice. And in that realization what we thought we were in the the game for changes because the the wounding is resolved mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. through the actualization and the realization oh my god my divinity my sovereignty has been here all along mm -hmm. and it can speak on my behalf and then we were we experienced so much empowerment the natural inclination stargate to curriculum oh I now experience so much happiness through my personal liberation. I have to lead. I'm being mm -hmm. called to lead. I'm being called to embody my divine purpose, mm -hmm. which is that spiritual leadership curriculum in Stargate 2. Mm -hmm. And I love that you had this calling. You're like, I've been, I've received a very clear message. I am here to facilitate. I am here to teach. I am here to guide others. And that Sophia Circle Leadership Certification Program is how to teach and lead and guide others through your sovereignty. Mm -hmm. It's such a powerful blueprint from the Ascended Masters. I would love for you to share, you know, what was like a pinnacle moment in the certification program for you um, that maybe you continue to ping back to in your Sophia Circle Leadership as you lead your journeys? Was there a defining moment as you were walking through the training program, one of the personal rituals. Or oh, there, there were so, really so many. It huh. was such a powerful uh, program. And I don't know why though, there, there's one that, that comes to mind in this yeah. moment. And um, it, it, was a, it was a mind blowing moment for, for me. Yeah. Uh, because probably for me, the most mysterious of all the Ascended Masters in this cosmology is Hathor. I knew she, you're gonna say that. <laughs> yeah. She's just um she's just always been very mysterious for me. And in the training, you said at one point that when Moses came down from the mountain and the people were gathered around the golden calf, mm -hmm. that golden calf was Hathor. Yeah, it was. And my mind just like because I'm Jewish. Mm. Um mm -hmm. It, it was like in that moment, everything turned upside down about wow. my thoughts about my lineage. It was so, it was a 
because I have been on this quest to understand the divine feminine for a long time now. And when the Sophia Code came along, it was like, oh my gosh, finally there's written somewhere everything that I've been thinking, but I've never seen anybody say it, you know? Oh, wow. And um, to understand that divine feminine thread yes. that was in my particular lineage was um, there was something that happened in my genes that I really can't even articulate. You know, I'm so glad you're bringing this up. I, I mean, we receive emails from people all over the world and I, I can't even, it's not possible to even read hardly any of them, but back in the day when I could still answer some emails or at least read them, one of the most touching emails that I managed to get my eyes on was this woman who was in tears because the Sophia Code honored Mother Mary as a Hebrew woman. Mm. You know, it was Beautiful. like so Beautiful. nourishing to her soul that her lineage was being honored through this embodied, this divine feminine embodiment of Mary. And I was like, of course it is. Like, mm. why would we ever want it to be any other way? Well, the other thing that just, completely magnetized me to the Sophia Code was the idea that these ascended masters from all different traditions are coming, are working together. Hello. <laughs> and Hello. How, and how strangely interwoven they are. Yeah. Like if you yes. really yes. look like yes. that one passage in Isis's chapter, like how her teachings pass through the Red Seas. Yes. Right? And then went on, you know, to, you know, Jesus and Mother Mary, like way down the line and how the, the Holy Family was training in Egypt and training in Tibet and training in India. And it's like bringing, bringing all of these pieces together is like bringing pieces of our heart together. Oh, so well said. I agree. Yeah. So what would you share, Carla? Um, I've just this is such a great conversation. And what would you share with someone um, that's new to the concept of going on a Sophia Circle journey? Like there's 13 gatherings. That's a journey that we call it a journey for a reason. There's, mm -hmm. there's a gathering for every single chapter. It, we're going through this monumental sacred text of sovereignty. Like why do you think a Sophia Circle journey is the perfect fit for someone new to the Sophia Code? What I love about the Sophia Circle journeys is that you're coming into a container with other people who are interested in speaking the same language as you are. And what that does is we come together and we exchange codes and, and, and that amplifies um, the power of the experience. It also normalizes um, the, I mean, the reason why I love to do Sophia Circle Journeys is because I get to talk about stuff that I love to talk about and other people in the circle also do. Yes. And once that becomes normalized, oh, I can have these conversations just like everyday life, then it's much easier to be who you really are in the wider world as well. That was one of the first things that I really noticed about you when I started to get to know you at live events was um, your mastery and grasp of the importance of language, even a single word. I think we even had a conversation about language in a microphone session in Sedona that le left a lasting impact on me about what's important to you. Mm. And I love that you're bringing up this, this conversation around stepping into a new paradigm language because the Sophia Code is it's, it's a metaphysical language to describe the cosmos and the human experience of ascension. And it can feel very intimidating, I think, for beginners, especially people that aren't drawn naturally to spirituality. Uh, how do you feel like the Sophia, the Sophia Circle journey kind of eases that language barrier and invites them in uh, to explore that new language in a safe way? Well, you have other people when you have things that um, come up as a result of 
encountering this language, you have other people you can talk to about it and 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 process your way through it, you know. So it it it's there's lots of support there. I love that. Oh my goodness. So tell me a little bit where you've got a Sophia circle journey coming up with you live starting in October. Is this going Correct. to be a virtual journey? It will be a virtual journey. It begins um, October 6th on a Thursday evenings, every other Thursday at seven o'clock PM central time. Perfect. So um, <clears throat> and it will go uh, October through March. So it'll be every two weeks, every two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's a really nice integration space between I I've done two every other week circles and one every week circle. And I, I like them both, but I do think that the every other week is, is, is good for pacing. Yes. It's a lot to take in every single chapter. Yes. Extremely yes. dense. <laughs> yes. Carla, it is truly a joy for me to be co-leading the Sophia Code movement with you. I just cherish every moment I've been able to directly connect with you at events and through the certification program. And now here on YouTube Live, thank you so much for your Sophia Circle leadership. Thank you for your ministry of Christ consciousness. Thank you for welcoming people into this new language and um, I just want to add a, another prop here for everyone. So big props is like Ashley Phoenix, one of our team angels attended your Sophia Circle journey, one of your virtual journeys. And as we all know, Ashley Phoenix is the head of our mystery school, our program coordinator, and she raved about journeying with you. She, was, she felt so safe and held and inspired. So I just want to pass along uh, her five stars on your Sophia Circle leadership. Well, I really loved having Ashley in our circle. It was uh, truly a gift and a bright light. Oh, so for those of you who would like to learn more about how you can contact Carla directly, please visit our certified Sophia Circle leaders directory on my website at kairah.com. You can learn more about what Carla is offering in the world and how to get in touch with her to join her virtual Sophia Circle journey starting this October 2022. Thank you for this opportunity to connect today, Carla. Bye-bye. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> yeah.